Conrad and Kramer, a president of the local government of Basel, take me back to the 11th of May in the evening when Nemo wins the contest and you realise Eurovision is actually coming to Switzerland. How soon after that did the idea hit you that it might be Basel that it could go to? James, to be honest, it hit me even before uh, Nemo um, had won the contest because we were a little bit prepared because we knew that Nemo is one of the favourites. So I asked my colleagues in the government uh, before the, the Eurovision, if ever Nemo should win, would we be prepared? Then afterwards, I could release a tweet on Sunday morning. Hmm. I, I didn't dare to do it on, on, on Saturday night, to be honest. You didn't want to jinx it. Thought, no, I thought, I'll let's sleep one night over it. But then in the morning, after a few calls, um, I released that tweet saying, Basel is prepared, we want to host the ESC. And that was the start of, of, um, um, of everything for us. Mm. As a city, is Eurovision always something that's in the back of your mind? Because you never quite know when a country is going to win, of course. But surely there's always that little thought that, oh, if we did win it, <laughs> no, that would be, be phenomenal. Not at all. Look, uh, we are not Sweden and we are not Finland. So we, <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> we had the Eurovision. I mean, it was it's ages ago mm. um, uh, that it has been in Switzerland. So no, nobody was, was counting that in. And uh, if you have asked me uh, one year um, before today, if ever... I will be um, hosting a Eurovision, I would say, uh, that would have appeared to me completely crazy. We didn't even know how um, confident we can be that, that people will support this. Because, of course, we know that also in Switzerland, a lot of people are, are following the Eurovision. But still, we didn't know, do we have the support? And then that developed very fast. And I, I noticed that a lot of my friends are actually ESC fans. I didn't know mm. that before. As someone in local government, as someone in politics, you have to deal with those kind of political challenges all of the time. What are some of the challenges you've encountered from people in trying to get this bid over the line? You know, we, we are planning stuff much with a much longer time frame and politics is get going slowly and even, and Switzerland is especially slow because we have the direct democracy. Exactly, so everything yeah. will be voted about and we have referendums all the time. So it's really as slowly progressing, steady progress, but slow. And the Eurovision is completely different because we had to decide in a, in a, within a few days. We had to put the people together within a few weeks. We had to get the funds within a, a same short time frame. So this was, for our political system, it was really a challenge and still is. And when you got into the bidding process, when you were fighting the other three Swiss cities that were shortlisted, of course, was it a more complex process than you expected? Did it become really challenging in the sense of what the EBU was asking for? Oh, yes. We received that um, so-called bit book uh, from our national broadcasters, this uh, the television. And it, I mean, it was amazingly detailed. And uh, after first uh, skimming through, we were, <laughs> we was were it not that optimistic. <laughs> it was quite heavy. I mean, they're, they're really asking detail about VIP transport at night for all the delegations. How will you handle those transportation questions? Of course, we didn't even think about that we thought about the venue and, and, mm. the, and the big stuff but they they got really into the nitty-gritty uh, quite early in the process but this was in fact good because it forced us to really think it through what does it mean and what funds are, are required to to even be able uh, to host such an event it's almost like an exam paper in a way you're getting a hundred oh, yes. questions and you have to come up with an answer to them Oh, yes. In, I mean, if you don't mind me asking, what's the most challenging criteria that, that you felt that Basel had to meet? What did you find that was most difficult to get an agreement on? That's an interesting question because first we thought that the, the biggest challenge for us is the capacity of the venue. Our mm. St. Jakobshalle is, is nice and new, but it's not that big. It, it will be able to host nine to 11,000 guests. So there were many, much bigger venues in, in earlier ESCs. So we thought that would be the challenge. We also thought that um, the, the number of, of hotel rooms we have could be a chance. But in fact, it was more about really integrating the, the whole city. 
into that that bidding. That was the, the demanding task. And I think that was also the reason why we succeeded in the end, because we were quite, um, yeah, we were capable of, of really putting everything into one bit. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's a massive difficulty to have so much alignment or to generate that alignment yes. in such a short space of time. Exactly. You it now is. get to welcome about half a million tourists from across the world to the city to give them a taste of what it's about. What are the things that you really want people coming to Basel to see? Um, we want to integrate our guests in our city, even if it's only for one day or a few days. We want them to show the, the beauty of the city, the openness of the city, the internationality of the city. Of course, with the hope that they're coming back, that they're, um, mm. you know, uh, spreading the words, uh, the word about uh, the beauty of Basel and then coming back as tourists or also as uh, working in, in our companies because we are much dependent on, on international workers here. So that's also a reason. If there's one almost tourist attraction or just beautiful place you think people want to go and see, what would you recommend? I mean, I would always recommend swimming in the river, right? You know, the, the river mm. is quite a big river and nobody swims in it. Only in Basel, people are going into this river. It's not dangerous at all, but it's a very special experience to, to be in the middle of a city in a, in a huge river, letting yourself float. And I hope, I mean, it will be May, so <laughs> it could be chilly, <laughs> but if we have good weather conditions, everybody will jump into the river Rhine and this will be a, an experience people will never forget. I, I think that would definitely set Basel apart. I've never floated yeah. in a river for a Eurovision before, no, but, but the idea of it sounds that. fabulous. Maybe we'll do it, it for is. a podcast. We'll jump jump with our microphones in, see how that plays with the equipment. <laughs> yes. uh, have you had the chance to speak to any of the previous host cities about what their experience was like? Regarding the, the logistic details, the whole organization, mm. and also the, the, the big learnings we are in in uh, in contact with Malmo, also with with Liverpool, who did an amazing job, and there is also from the from the European broadcasting, there is a quite a few people that are touring around, so they share their experience. I mean, it would be impossible to start at at zero for for mm. every new host city. So those um, experience transfer is something really important. The circumstances are very different in in every country. Of course, we, we, we have ideas from Malmö, from Liverpool, but at the end, um, we have to do it uh, our way, uh, with our restrictions, with our possibilities. And it, it will, every ESC is, is different. What are the things that Basel wants to do differently from other Eurovisions in the past? I know that you've already announced that the St. Jacobs Park, the big football stadium next to the arena, is going to be used as like an arena plus with about yes. 30, 40,000 fans being able to go in that, which is a totally different level of a plus event than we've ever seen. Are there any other different things on the radar for Basel? Basel is, in fact, a very, very small city. It only mm. has 200,000 inhabitants. If you count in the whole metropolitan area, it's around 800,000. But the, the city is, in its origins, it's, it's a medieval city with one river passing through the, the river Rhine. This sometimes, of course, is a restriction for the city development and for traffic, but it is a huge advantage for people who are coming to a city, experience it without a car, but by, by walking. Everything in Basel is, is literally in walking distance. Mm. So I think that is something we want to show, a, a very compact ESC where you do not have to travel um, with a subway from the, you know, from the venue to the ESC village to the ESC club. This will be everything will be very short distance. And saying this, is, it will also be in the center of the city. So you're not isolated from the normal city life in your ESC bubble. But there will be a whole Basel ESC bubble integrating the people coming to us with the people living here. And I think this is a, a, a big chance for everyone. So to really getting to know each other, to have this cultural exchange the ESC stands for. So uh, I'm really quite optimistic that this will, will work out very nicely. Mm. So almost the city becomes the bubble at that point. 
because there's no real distinction. Exactly, exactly. You you say it correctly. This uh, we we will not we, we can't we couldn't even if we wanted because the city is not that big. But we <laughs> of course, we, but we really want to integrate it. We also want to give you know other other musicians a chance to to have their performances on 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 in the public. So there will be a, a party going on everywhere for uh, for um, several weeks. How excited are you as a Eurovision fan? I mean, is this something that you've personally followed for years and years, or are you coming into this new? No, no, no. I, I want to be absolutely honest about that. I haven't been a Eurovision fan. I mean, of course, I was following that. Um, of course, I, I saw the show, but not every year and not mm. in a big event with friends. I, look, I, I, I told you, I, I heard from really close friends. I didn't even know that they have their whole ES, their ESC parties every year. Yeah, I heard from from families who have it as a family gathering. Uh, so, so I didn't even know how how huge ESC is. So I'm I'm all in now, but I haven't mm. been a, f- a fan for years. I think this is something a politician should be honest about. No, I. Very, very, very happy to hear that. What stands out to you amongst Eurovision's values as things you want Basel to be connected with? I mean, of course, the obvious is the internationality, but mm. I think that is not something we we have to go in deeper because that, yeah, that is self-explaining. I think that the most important thing at the moment is is the the diversity approach ESC has. And also the ESC fan community has. And I think this is something the ESC can really make a difference in, in, in awareness of, um, of uh, people watching the show, people living in a host city, how diverse our world is, and that it's not a dangerous thing that it is diverse. Uh, but on the opposite, it's a big chance for our society to be open-minded um, regarding other person's needs regarding other person's wants, um, other person's ideas, and um, other person's identity, feeling of identity. So that, I think that is what diversity stands for. And as an international city, we I think we are used to that, but still we can we can learn, we can grow even more tolerant, even more open minded, and uh, ESC will help a lot with that. Yeah, it's it's almost accelerating a process. And it yeah. allows you to supercharge and, it. And if I may say one yeah. more thing, you know, Basel is a is a, a city at the border. We, we are at the border to to Germany and France. And Switzerland is very small, and France mm. is very big, and Germany is very big. We we are in this neighborhood with Germany and France forever. Um, we have more borders with Germany and France than we have with Switzerland. So, so we really are an international city only also in the daily life. Mm. And the ESC is about crossing border or, or, or even even let's say ignoring borders and and uh, that is also fantastic for us as as a, as a border city to to see Europe together in in, in our place it, it totally aligns and that's why crossing borders is one of the themes that you're going to be running with yeah, for the that contest was, uh, itself the, the bit uh, theme yes and you know they're coming by train this is nice they don't have to fly they they can they can come without a, a huge um, impact not not from the island i know this will be difficult <laughs> <laughs> so last thing now it's now it's all said and done and it's happening simply put how proud are you that the biggest song contest in the world is going to be hosted in basel um well i am ex- extremely proud but as i always pride is a is a difficult concept because mm. it's not something um, I've done. It's uh, something a, a team has done, and I'm just glad to be to be able to be part of that team. And uh, yeah, that that we made it. I was also, to be honest, quite surprised how well it worked between the public sector and the private sector. So, and, it, and it had to work on, on, in, in a very very short time frame. And that this was possible, I think this, um, yeah. G- 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 Gives the security that we that we can handle it, that that we are able to to host an event that huge in our small city and really be welcoming to all the guests coming. 
Well, thank you, Conradin, for coming. And I just want to say, listeners, he's wearing a fabulous tie. If, you, if you're not watching this on YouTube, yeah. he's got a wonderful tie. It's like white poke. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, I think those are little balloons. Uh, yeah. That is, you know, little balloons. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, little balloons. Yes. That's wonderful. You can't, can't make it out on the camera. <laughs> you know, it, it, my, my children decide every morning which uh, tie oh, really? I, I should wear, and they always choose red and balloons, and they, didn't, they do not choose the, the serious motives. But it's okay. <laughs> It's fine. They're on. They're on brand. They know what. They know what you need, Conrad. And thank you so so much for talking to us. Thank you, James. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Basel. I'll see you there.